guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. Today, I am finally going to be walking you through my post wash day styling routine. I have definitely shared styling product recommendations in previous videos, but I have never sat down, I don't think, to fully do a walkthrough of my styling routine. So I apologize it's taken me so long to film this video, but to make it up, I thought that I would share two different routines in one video. So one is going to be my full blow dry routine and the other is going to be my heatless curl routine. I do both of these routines after wash day just depending on what I'm in the mood for so I thought I'd do a little two-in-one and show you both options. All right let's not keep you waiting any longer than you need to be anymore and just jump right into it. The first thing that I do after getting out of the shower is squeeze my hair dry with a microfiber towel. I keep it super gentle no rubbing back and forth with the towel of course but I do make sure sure to squeeze the length of my ponytail several times and then I will repeat that two to three times to make sure that all of the excess water is removed from my hair. This significantly speeds up my drying process so it's an absolute must for me. After that I will put my hair up in some sort of towel wrap so that it can dry even further. I have a couple different towel wraps that I really enjoy. I do like to use microfiber here again so I will either do that or use a t-shirt towel. I think both are great options. Regardless of the type of material that you're using for a towel wrap, you'll just want to make sure that it's super absorbent so that again, you can speed up the drying process and you'll be able to tell if that towel is absorbent or not, because if it is, it will be really, really wet after it's sitting in your hair for a while. If you're using something like a standard cotton towel, you will notice that that does not get nearly as wet because it's not as absorbent as microfiber or a t-shirt like this. And on top of that, a standard cotton towel is a lot rougher on the hair. The material is not nearly as soft and gentle as something like microfiber, but it's also significantly heavier and bulkier. And the weight of that, if you have that tied up in your hair, can really pull on the hair and ultimately cause breakage. Whereas these ones are really nice and lightweight. These are not going to tug on your hair at all. So that is why I like to go for something like this over a standard cotton towel. The amount of time that I let my hair sit in that towel wrap will really just depend on what I have planned for that day. But I would say on average, I'm leaving my hair in the towel wrap for anywhere between one and three hours. I've gotten a lot of questions on this topic of air drying versus heat drying. Should you air dry it all? Should you heat dry it all? Or maybe do a combination of both. What's the best? And at this time, we just don't have enough research to definitively prove if one is clearly better than the other. We just know that both air drying and heat drying cause damage. I personally feel that letting my hair dry in a towel wrap for a little bit before blow drying is a nice happy medium for me because it minimizes the need for excessive heat on soaking wet hair while also still protecting my hair from breakage knowing how fragile it is when it's wet. But do what works best for you. Now I am ready to apply leave-in conditioner and the products that I use here do depend on whether or not I plan to just fully blow dry my hair or do my heatless styling routine. So if I am going to do some sort of a blowout, then I will always use my Color Wow Dream Coat. This is an anti-frizz treatment designed to protect your hair from humidity and leave it looking and feeling really, really smooth and shiny and glossy. They recommend spraying this liberally to sections of damp hair and they actually specify that your hair should be damp and not soaking wet when you apply it, which is another reason why I like to let my hair dry in that towel for a little bit. After that, Color Wow says that you should not apply other styling products on top of the dream coat, but I do not follow those directions. I just don't think this dream coat gives me enough detangling and conditioning power, so I always apply another leave-in conditioning spray on top of this, but keep in mind they do advise against that. My favorite of all time is still the Pureology Color Fanatic Multitasking Leave-In Spray. If you have hair that is really tangly, feels really dry, is really damaged, is frizzy, easy this is a dream. So I will spray this on top of my dream coat and then I am ready to detangle. But before I go in with a brush, something that I want to make sure I'm mentioning is how I actually apply these sprays. For any leave-in conditioning product, especially leave-in conditioning spray that's designed to detangle my hair, it's super important for me to apply that product in sections versus just all over at once because that is going to ensure that my hair is as evenly coated as possible 
so that I'm able to detangle without breakage and I'm also protecting my hair from heat evenly. Unless you have very low density or super thin hair, I would highly recommend doing this because if you're just taking a leave-in conditioning spray, applying a couple spritzes to either side of your head, that is not going to apply product evenly. That's going to apply product to some of the outer layers of your hair, but none of the hair underneath here. And it's really important to be evenly coating the hair so that you're protecting it from breakage, you're properly conditioning it, and you're protecting it from heat. So after spraying a generous amount of these products to sections of my hair, I will go ahead and detangle. If I ever have a very intense knot, I will always try to separate that with my fingers first versus just ripping a brush straight through it. That's just gonna make your hair break right off. We do not, we do not support breakage promoting activities around here. But after that, I will go in with a brush and I always use a brush that has a combination of plastic bristles that are more widely spaced apart and softer kind of hair bristles as well. This one is the Olivia Garden Styler, but I also use the Wet Brush Pro. Both are great, either works. So I'll just take my brush and gently detangle from the ends up. If I ever hit a point that my brush does not easily brush through, again, first I'll try to separate the knot with my fingers fingers or I will just use my brush to kind of gently pull the hair apart instead of again just like ripping down straight through. That is the last thing you want to do if your hair is feeling tangled if you're trying to prevent breakage. If you don't care, I mean go for it. Okay, hair is detangled. We have leave-in conditioner and heat protection applied. In order to actually activate Dream Coat, they say that you need to blow dry the hair with tension, meaning that you'll have to pull on your hair a little bit with some sort of brush while applying heat. So I am using my Dyson here today because I already purchased it and I'm not letting that $600 go to waste. But if this is not an option for you to purchase, I will list some other options below that are more affordable at different price points. So I do start off the blow drying process by blow drying just with my fingers and without using any sort of brush or tension, really mostly just around the top of my head and my roots to speed up the drying process because that part takes forever to dry. But then once my hair is, I would say like, 80% dry, then I will go in with a brush and that dryer to apply the tension. If you are using the Dyson, you can of course just swap out the dryer head for one of the brush heads to apply tension in that way. But if you're just using a regular dryer, you can either use a round brush or a vented brush and I will list some options for those below as well. I almost never try to recreate a salon style blowout at home because my hair texture just does not hold on to that style for long at all. Even if I get my hair professionally blow dried, it looks amazing at first, but it falls flat within a couple hours. So for me, it's just not worth the hassle and the time and effort, even though I love how it looks at first. So I don't really ever do that. Instead, I will either blow dry my hair pretty much completely straight and then leave it like that, or maybe curl it later in the week with a curling wand, or I will not blow dry it completely straight and instead I will use the Dyson curling attachment to create curls, but then I have to do like a tight curl, pin them up, lot of hairspray, like that's really the only type of heated curl or heated style that lasts on my hair. So today I am just using that brush to blow dry my hair straight and then after my hair is fully blow dried, I do like to apply a little bit of a styling oil. This is definitely not a crucial step, but I do feel like it just gives my hair that perfect final touch. It makes it look a little bit glossier. It tames flyaways. So I love to use a hair oil. The oil that I'm using today is the Oribe Gold Lust Nourishing Hair Oil. I love this. It is so good, but it is obviously pretty pricey. And I have a lot of other hair oils at lower price points that I do really enjoy. So I will list some options again at different price points for you in the description box as well. So after applying a few pumps of that oil to my hair, my blow dry process is complete. All right, now for my heatless curl routine. I do really love to create heatless curls if I'm not going to be styling with a blow dryer. And when I create heatless curls, I don't do a full blow dry with tension. Okay. I don't do a full blow dry with tension, so I will skip the color wow since that's needed to activate it and then just go for the Pureology Color Fanatic instead. I feel like I just held that up so weird. On these days, I sometimes add a little bit of a styling lotion or cream depending on how my hair is feeling, but I don't always do this. And when I do, I just make sure not to use too much product. I have found through all of my experimentation with hair care that 
I was definitely overdoing it with leave-in products in the past. And while that wasn't damaging my hair, it was just making my hair feel kind of heavy and weighed down and dirty. And I just don't love that. I like when my hair feels lightweight and bouncy and not weighed down. So for a super lightweight option, or if you have very thin, fine hair, I think that the Redken Acidic Perfecting Concentrate Leave-In Treatment is great because it's kind of like a gel cream. This is not going to weigh down your hair at all. It's just a nice little finishing treatment treatment, a little bit of extra conditioning on top of a spray that is not going to make your hair feel dirty. But if you do want a little bit of a thicker lotion or cream, maybe you have really coarse thick hair, I would definitely check out the Bumble and Bumble Bond Building Repair Styling Cream. This is so good. It always makes my hair feel so soft and smooth. I really love it. I personally like to apply lotions and creams like that after I have applied my leave-in conditioning spray and after I have detangled my hair. Because my hair does get pretty tangly, it just doesn't really make sense for me to apply products like that on top of tangles. It just doesn't apply product evenly. It ends up sticking to certain areas of my tangles and not others. So in order to make sure that I'm getting even distribution and not ending up with like chunks of my hair that feel heavier than others, I will apply a leave-in conditioning spray detangle, then take a little bit of that and just run it through the lengths and ends of my hair. But if you don't have tangly hair, then you could definitely apply the lotions and creams before brushing because that's just going to give you even more protection from breakage. After that, I do actually go in with a blow dryer for a little bit, so I guess it's not completely heatless, but I'm only blow drying around my roots at the top of my head because again, otherwise that takes forever to dry. And then on top of that, I just feel like my hair looks so much better when with a little bit of a blow dry at the roots. It makes it look more uniform. It makes it look more sleek and soft and shiny. It helps to tone down frizz. And for whatever reason, I feel like my hair always looks greasy if I let it air dry at the roots versus if I blow dry, it doesn't seem to. Do any of you have that problem? Maybe it's just me, but I definitely prefer how my hair looks when I blow dry at the root a little bit, get some nice volume, y'all get it. Then after that, when my lengths and ends are still damp, I will use my heatless styling tool of choice, I guess. My go-to for more defined curls is still the Octo Curl, so I will sat below. But if I am in the mood for defined waves, let's say, instead of curls, I absolutely love the new robe tie curl technique that I have been talking to you guys about in recent videos. So I'll just take that robe tie, place it in the center of my head and secure it with a jaw clip. That's definitely a top tip I would recommend for robe tie curls because it just keeps the robe tie in place so that it's not falling all over the place when you're curling. So again, I have already shared this robe tie curl technique in previous videos, but I did see a lot of comments saying that it was the the same thing as French braiding, and it's actually not. There are some differences. So the key difference is that for this technique, you will pull a section of hair across the robe tie like you would with a French braid, but instead of leaving it there, you fully wrap it around the robe tie back to the starting position. Then you will do the same exact thing with a section of hair on the opposite side of the robe tie, pull it across the tie, pull it around so that you are back to the starting point. The similarity to French braiding comes in as you continue to wrap your hair around the robe tie. You will want to continue to pull more hair into the tie as you're wrapping, just like you would with a French braid. But again, the difference is that you want to actually fully pull the hair around that robe tie and back to the start. It is a little bit confusing to get the hang of at first, but I promise once you practice a few times, it's super quick and easy. Then to secure that robe tie in place, I will just wrap a hosiery elastic around the ends of my hair a few times, and then I I am good to go. When I'm sleeping, I actually do prefer to just leave the ties fully down. I feel like that is most comfortable, but if I still have a while before I'm going to bed, I will pull this up around my head, create a little knot so that it's kind of in like a headband and then it's fully out of the way and I don't have the robe ties you know, flapping around and getting in my way. So I'll sleep with that robe tie in my hair and then the next morning I will still add a little bit of oil to finish off the look, but then after that, the heatless curl process is complete as well. And I have to say, even though I am obsessed with the look of a really glossy blow dry using Dream Coat, I have been rocking heatless styles a lot more often lately because they last on my hair so much longer. Even if I'm just blow drying my hair straight, it never looks the same the next day, it never looks as good. With overnight heatless waves and curls, my hair always lasts at least two days, if not longer. So 
This has been my go-to. I am really loving it. All right, you guys, that is it for my post wash day styling routines, plural. I hope that you guys found this helpful. Again, I'm so sorry it took so long, but hopefully you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below if you are going to test out anything that I talked about in this video. I will again have all the products that I talked through listed and linked in my description box below in order of mention. So it's really easy for you to find. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, Channel. if you haven't already click on that notification bell and send my channel to a friend thank you so much for your support in doing all of those things it really helps me out so it means the world and thank you guys so much as always for watching i love the freaking heck out of you make sure to stay tuned for my next video because that will be up in a few days but until then i hope you have a great few days Ooh.